Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome to you from Patriots Point Soccer Stadium in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. A very big matchup tonight in the USL Championships Eastern Conference as third place Charleston Battery plays host to first place Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Sean St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez, Espen, happy to be with you. Ricky, we take a closer look at the standings in the East, and it's a huge matchup tonight in the USL Championship. And we'll start with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Bob Lewis side sitting at the top of this Eastern Conference, but it's a completely different mindset now that you are the hunted. So what does that look like? But for Charleston Battery, you're at home the first 15 minutes. It's going to be really important for Ben Pierman's side. Ben Pierman's side needed to show a little bit of resiliency on the road last time out. Miami looked to have come away with the three points. Andrew Booth saves them in stoppage time. When you talk about character, you talk about belief and collective efforts. Trey Muse was massive, that SPAC line was massive, and you bring in Andrew Booth at the depth. You talk about the always that belief system, Sean, and that's something that the Charleston battery, not easy going down to Miami, humid turf field. So what does that look like? But again, to walk away with that point, it's a good result for this Charleston battery side. That was the moment. Booth in the 97th minute saved Charleston a point, and they're hoping to take that momentum into this game tonight. And not many better in the USL Championship at carrying momentum than Augie Williams. Yeah, when he's confident, you're going to see him. He's going to want the ball, but he's going to stay high. He's going to occupy the two center backs of the Riverhounds. The ability to pop in the hole, but also spin in behind and stretch the game. If you're Ben Pierman and Charleston Batter, you want him confident in around that 18-yard box here tonight. On the other side of the coin for Bob Lilly's Pittsburgh Riverhounds, 13 matches unbeaten coming into this game. And it's been a collective effort, not just defensively, but all the way through the team. So many different players have gotten a chance and it's really come together. 12 goals against on the season so far. That's so good in terms of their, how compact can they be from back to front? That's something that we expect from Bob Lilly's side. Hard to break down, very good in rotations. And that, there's a reason why they've been so good defensively this season. Well, it's an old school rivalry in the USL Championship. There's no question about that, but it means a lot more at this point in the season in this campaign with two teams pushing for the top spot in the Eastern Conference. Charleston and Pittsburgh renew their rivalry in South Carolina, and the kickoff is next. The estimated haul time is now 96 minutes. Sorry, are you still there? Yes. Okay, please hold. You hear all the time about Diamonds Direct's prices and selection and warranties. All true, and all good reasons to give us a visit. But what really sets Diamonds Direct apart is something that's hard to put into words. But you will feel it. You'll know it from the minute you walk in. It's our unique culture, our passion, our genuine and absolute desire to totally revolutionize the way you experience jewelry shopping. It's why we do what we do. Diamonds Direct. Your love, our passion. This is no sleepy-headed, moving-in-reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier-breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward-thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina, now that's smart. Tonight's match is brought to you by South Carolina Education Lottery. Did you know that more than 4,800,000 lottery funded scholarships and grants have been awarded to students in the Low Country since 2002? For more information, visit sceducationlottery.com slash education wins. 
Sean St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez, Espen back here with you. The Bud Light starting lineups for both teams. Ben Pierman's boys in orange tonight look like this. And they need to be compact. You're looking at Allen and you're looking at Ikaza. How comfortable can they get on the ball and get in a rhythm? Move the ball from left to right and that back four keep everything in front of you. You have Augie Williams. So what does the service look like into him for the Charleston battery? But flipping sides to Pittsburgh Riverhounds, it all comes down to that front three, Sean. Dequa, Forbes, and Ibar. What does that relationship look like? As Dequa stays high, Forbes is going to come underneath. So he wants to get in on the ball and combine with Danny Griffin and Robbie Mercer. That midfield 4-5 is going to be really interesting for Bob Lilly's side. Well, we talked about it in the open. These two have been long, long-standing rivals in the USL Championships history. But in recent memory in the USL Championship, not many bigger games between these two than this one tonight. Keys to the game are brought to you by Gildan, a leader in high-quality, comfortable apparel basics located right here in the low country. Charleston hoping to get off to a fast start. And I think the first 15 minutes is going to be really important because we talked with Ben Pierman and said we can't let the Riverhounds get in, into their defensive structure and we can't let them get comfortable. And for the Riverhounds, we talked about in the open, sitting at the top of the Eastern Conference, so what, with that target on your back, what does that look like in terms of the pressure and how do you deal with it? We are underway from Patriots Point Soccer Stadium. Matthew Corrigan, our official, gets us underway. The Battery and the Riverhounds in one of the best rivalries in the USL Championship. Charleston coming in on a three-game unbeaten run after salvaging a point in Miami last time out. Andrew Booth's 97th minute equalizer, saving them a point at the death. The Pittsburgh Riverhounds at the moment, 13 matches unbeaten, sitting at the top of the Eastern Conference standings. Can anybody stop them? We will see if their rivals Charleston can tonight. The battery trying to get off to that fast start, a little bit of a brief moment. They get to the edge of Pittsburgh's penalty area, but the men in orange are stopped, and Pittsburgh come back the other way, looking to get closer to potentially sending, setting, I should say, a new franchise record for unbeaten games in a row. Riverhound set the record back in 2004 for the club's history. That was when it was the USL Pro League. Now that they're in the championship, they're hoping to set a new Riverhounds unbeaten mark and they're hoping to do it at the home of their rivals. And we are excited for it. It is expected to be a great game. Good atmosphere on hand as well. And we will see which of these two can get a leg up in the Eastern Conference playoff chase. Mertz, sees it swept away by Emilio Icaza. Pittsburgh in there, slightly changed strips tonight, yellow and gray. He's in the hands of Charleston Battery on the far side. Second meeting between these two this season. Pittsburgh won at Highmark back on June 10th by two goals to nil. At this point in the game, last time out between these two, Pittsburgh had already scored. Junior Etu scored inside of a minute. And then Tola Shawanmi sealed the points in the 83rd minute. And Ben Pierman's boys are hoping to get a little bit of retribution in the low country tonight. And I think attacking wise for this battery side, it all comes down to the relationship between Markanik and Williams. How quickly can they get in the same page? Playing off the shoulder of Robbie Mertz and Danny Griffin, that's going to be key in terms of breaking down this defensive unit of Bob Lilly's side. Because we talk about when they get to the mid to low block, it's so difficult to break down in terms of just keeping compact from back to front. And you had Jamali Waite, very capable goalkeeper between the sticks for the visitors here tonight. He's been working his way back into the squad after a semi-final appearance in the CONCACAF Gold Cup with Jamaica. Back up to Andre Blake, who plays for Philadelphia Union in Major League Soccer. And he's floated down this near side for Albert Dequa, who's continuing to have a great season for Bob Lilly's group, 10 goals this season. He's joint top for the Golden Boot. Here's Ibarra, shepherding it out wide. Maybe a chance to cross this into the middle, but it's well defended on that far side and the battery do come out with possession.
near side. Chris Allen, a chance with Ben Pierman to discuss who's been shining of late for Charleston Battery. Chris Allen was one of the first names he brought up. He's been so consistent for the Battery this season. And the work ethic has also stood out. And that's what Ben Pierman was reiterating to us in the lead up to the game. It's deflected out of play. And it will be a corner on the far side. And I think he's just so important for this battery side, just in terms of his positioning. He likes to sit right in front of that back four, so that gives Ikaza the ability and the freedom to join the attack as he sees fit, but also the ability to just disrupt opposition in terms of their position. And in terms of their possession, excuse me, I think he's massive, and he's been a massive acquisition for this battery side. Speaking of bright spots, Fidel Barajas is going to take this for Charleston. Bright young stars in the USL Championship. He sweeps it in with his right boot. It's in the mixer, not quite definitively cleared. And then a shot from the aforementioned Chris Allen goes well wide of Jamali Waite's goal. And Pittsburgh will get a chance to reset. Eight wins, five draws, no defeats in the last 13 for Pittsburgh, just two losses all year. The last time they lost, you have to go back to April 22nd at El Paso. It was a 2-0 defeat. The only other loss was four days before that at Colorado Springs, a 1-0 defeat. Romario Williams had the winner late on in that game. Since then, essentially unblemished, <laughs> Bob Lilly's group, and they're hoping to continue that great run tonight. You just look at their most recent games as well. Yes, at home against Detroit City, but the one before that, you going into the Lynn Family Stadium mm. and by far the better side against a well-worked Danny Cruz's side, especially with the Hossa environment. Yes, Lou City has maybe not have the best run of form at the moment, but again, going into Lynn Family, getting a clean sheet, taking all three points back home, that's something that Bob Lilly is extremely proud about and quick to Ben Pierman pointing out to us again, Sean, saying, look, we respect them. We know how good they are on the offensive side, but also defensively as well. It seems like Patriots Point and Highmark have been the two epicenters for big games this year <laughs> in the USL Championship. Seems like these two have just been taking on every big team. And in Pittsburgh's case, they're unbeaten at home as well this season. It's where, on the road, I should say, where they've had the most blemishes to their record. Charleston looking to add another blemish as it's headed centrally. And Nick Markanek, who's been in good form as well for the battery. His header, however, meets the gloves of Jamali Wade. It's a really interesting hold into the lineup as Dawson drops back to his right back position, played striker in college, so has the ability to join the attack when he sees fit and provide quality service. Markanek, very good understanding, playing off the shoulder of the shields and fail. Fortunate enough for Molly wait straight at him. Yeah. Look at the all-time series, at least in the recent years, between these two. Charleston's gotten the better of Pittsburgh. The last six, though, you look at the last six in particular. Pittsburgh has three wins and two draws, just the one defeat against Charleston in the more recent history between these two foes. And it has been, at times, here at Patriots Point, a mixed bag for Charleston. Ben Pierman talked to us about that. Yes, there's been a few outliers. The San Antonio game certainly comes to mind, but they've been given a lot of big teams, big problems here, and they're hoping to do just that with Pittsburgh here tonight. But Ben Pierman talked about the challenge, he even mentioned that they might need a little bit of luck in this game. And it's because of the great form that Pittsburgh had been in, but we're expecting a really entertaining and enthralling contest. There is DZ Harmon, former battery player. Ibarra in support. Goes all the way back to Joey Farrell and company. And the pass forward by DeShields, nearly picked off. DeShields does well to stay with it and send it forward. Forbes trying to find a teammate, Rivera, on the far side. It goes back to the battery. I think a point of emphasis for both of these sides are going to be the wing backs for the Riverhounds, whether it's Rivera on that far side, Harmon on this near side. Because yes, if you're Bob Lilly, you want to be expansive. You want to play with a lot of numbers in that final third. We always have to have that balance because if you get caught out, 
in terms of transition moments. We've seen how good in terms of his movement, Augie Williams is, Barajas and Avila, because they're going to stay high, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the opposing center back. So again, transition moments are going to be key here today. Arcanic went down. Barajas trying to pick up the pieces. Ball goes out of play. Harmon helps Markanek up to his feet. And Matthew Corrigan was on the scene to give the battery a set piece. Ikaza standing over this with Barajas. Both certainly capable of Finding a teammate from this distance, although Barajas wanders away. Ikaza, it's got some bend on it. It's headed centrally down, and Wade has to parry it out for a corner. Well, that ball just hung up for quite some time, and Pittsburgh were nearly caught out. Give credit to Dotson. Reads a fly to the ball to perfection. Bridget once again just plays off the shoulder of the Shields. It needs to be better between. 18-yard box defensively for the Riverhounds. Rivera, DeShields, a slow in rotation. No one takes the initiative to make a play on the ball. But once again, big time save for Jamali Wade. A couple of times, Jamali Wade has been called upon for Bob Lilly's group in these first 10 minutes. Barajas from the corner for the battery. It's into a dangerous area, and it's headed in! The battery, strike first! Palma's header! Gives Charleston the lead past the 10 minute mark. We talked about Charleston needing a brisk start. It's a dazzling finish brought to you by Diamonds Direct. Palma with a beauty of a header. And the battery strike first, it's 1 0. We've talked about how important set pieces have to be for this home side. You have Barajas on the ball, a wand of a left foot that he possesses. You know he's going to provide quality service in. But once again, we keep mentioning it, Sean. The shields, the back line for the Riverhounds needs to be better. So easy. You can't give a player like Palma about eight yards out of his own box, be able to rise up, guide it into that far post. Terrific start here for the home side for Charleston Battery and Ben Pierman's boys. First goal of the season for Juan Sebastian Palma. And Ben Pierman couldn't have gotten a better start from the battery. They've come close twice. They've scored once. And Pittsburgh find themselves in a little bit of uncharted territory behind. They have not been behind very often in the USL championship of late. You saw it coming. The inability to deal with set pieces, quality service. The Charleston battery have been asking all sorts of questions and testing the shape of the Riverhounds. Not once, not twice, but three times. First to the ball. So if you're Bob Lilly, you're going to be a bit frustrated. Just that's not X and O, Sean. That's just pure willingness not to lose your individual battle, but give credit to Palma. It rises up, flicks it over his left shoulder into the back of the net. And now, what's a reaction look like for this home side? They're up 1 0 within the first 12 minutes. How can you get the secondary goal? And how can back can you be in the back? Battery matches are the perfect place to make lifelong memories with your friends and family, your group of 10 or more. Enjoy discounted tickets, exclusive on-field experiences, and private hospitality areas. To catch the match, visit charlestonbattery.com to learn more and plan a memorable night at Patriots Point. It's been a memorable start for the battery. Wade had to make a couple of big saves, but then Juan Sebastian Palma with a scorcher of a header. Nothing Wade could have done about it. And Ben Pierman's boys are out in front. There's Augie Williams for the battery. There's Declan Wynn, picked off by DZ Harmon, then they both come together. Allen does nicely there to pick up the pieces. Charleston looking to add on early here. And an orange are queuing up. Cross comes in, it is deflected, out for a Charleston corner. One of the battery players, I think that's Win, down behind the play is slow to continue here. Bit of an awkward coming together between him and DZ Harmon here on this near side. The follow through from the Riverhounds player catches Declan Win. 
hopefully he's okay to keep on going for Ben Pierman's boys because he's so massive in what they do on the attacking phase of the game, but also defensively. So comfortable on the ball, the ability to step into that final third and pick passes and break lines. Which reason why he's had the ability to represent his country already. Tonight's injury report is presented by MUSC Health Sports Medicine. Pittsburgh, relatively clean bill of health. They've been dealing with some ups and downs in that category this season. Juan, of course, has been out for some time for the battery. And hopefully Wynn is okay on the field at the moment. He's actually making his 100th appearance in the USL Championship tonight. And we're, hoping, we're hopeful, I should say, that it continues here. One thing to note, Pittsburgh has fallen behind here. The sixth time this season, Pittsburgh has trailed first in a game. The previous five times, Pittsburgh have just one win, two draws and two defeats. So quite a mixed bag when the Riverhounds do indeed fall behind this season. And the battery add on here, Barajas. It's into a dangerous area again. And this time the header is a whisker wide of the post. And it was that man again, Palma, in the area. Just too easy for this battery side just to rise up an uncontested header about seven yards once again. Palma just gets it all wrong. But again, if you're Molly Wait, just Shields, Farrell, or Donias, you need to be better in terms of your positioning and ability just to rise up and challenge. Almost looked identical to the goal. Just went wide of the post. There's a foul and a free kick. It goes Charleston's way. Well, Declan Wynn is not the only player making a big milestone appearance tonight. 250th appearance for Canardo Forbes. King Kenny, what a career he's had. All-time USL championship leader in assists. and. Knock on wood, if he makes it to the 48th minute, we'll get to see him get up to a minute's milestone as well. But 250 appearances for Canardo Forbes. What, a, what an achievement and what a milestone. What a player. We've talked about him, this, how comfortable he is on the ball, the assist that he possesses in between his vision, also just the leadership, the ability to play 250 games in this USO Championship, not only talks about between the lines, but also off of it how much of a professional he is in terms of how he takes care of his body. So hats off to Kanata Forbes. And he's continuing to have a great season. Five assists in the USL Championship. That's right at the top of the assist charts. He's always in that running for assists. One of the best this league has seen. Uh, one of the league's bright stars, Barajas, leading Allen and company into the attack here for Charleston. Once cross deflected, Wynn has come back into the fray and he picks up the pieces here for the battery and he'll reset all the way back. Been really impressed with just the balance from this Charleston battery side, especially Ikaz and Allen in the center of the park. As Allen, it's a great ball there. As Allen pushes high, Ikaz has the whereabouts just to stay home. I always want to be a pivot, especially in the middle of the park, and that's something that we've seen from number eight and number four in orange here today. Ball was threaded through, Ikaza picks off the pass. I think Dequa was the target, and the goal scorer Palma goes all the way back to Trey Muse. First time we had a chance to mention Trey Muse. He's on the week 19 team of the week in the USL Championship, and he's actually six saves away for 300 in his career. He's definitely one of the top goalkeepers in the USL Championship. I don't think there's much debate about that. Win the intended target on this ball. Donez gets it to Harmon. Deke was hold up play and he was trying to get Ibarra involved. But the Charleston back line sweeps away the chance. about Pittsburgh's defensive acumen this season. They've been one of the best as far as fewest goals conceded, clean sheets, but Charleston have had seven clean sheets this season, tied for the third best in the USL Championship. So 
Pittsburgh do have to up their game if they are going to come back in this match against Ben Pierman's group. Getting a lot of game left to play, of course, but Charleston defensively, despite a few outliers, as Ben Pierman told us, has been just as good as the top teams defensively this season. Words there between Bob Lilly and the star defenders, Arturo Ordonez, as they're trying to clean some things up, it appears, at the back to start this game. Particularly on set pieces, Ricky. That's been the shaky point for Bob Lilly's group so far. And I also think Danny Griffin and Robbie Mertz are getting caught out a bit too easy, too many times pressing high. That leaves a massive watch out there. I mean, leaves a massive gap right in front of that back three. So again, you always want to stay home. We keep talking about it with between Allen and Ikaza, but Robbie Mertz and Danny Griffin widely untested in this match. We haven't said their name as much, and that's going to be a massive part for the Riverhounds if they have any hopes of taking points here on the road. Allen with a rash challenge on DZ Harmon. Free kick for the Hounds. It's been a great 20 minutes for Ben Pierman's boys here. Palma's headed goal off a corner kick separates the sides. Koenig runs out of room. It's back to Pittsburgh's possession here. And, well, there you go. That's a big difference maker so far in this game as well. Five shots for Charleston, none for the leaders in the East. Just haven't seen comfortable, especially in that final third. Talked about the milestone from Colonel Arthur Forbes, but hasn't gotten on the ball at all. 21 minutes in. The result, Deke has been extremely quiet, but give credit to the battery, how good they've been defensively. What that back six, Allen and Calza right in front of that back four, but Palma and Archer don't need a second invitation to step up the clog passing lanes. They've been so good in this Ben Pyramid side. Easy enough for Muse from the set piece. Eat bar up, giving chase. Archer, who's also away at Gold Cup for quite a few weeks as well. Captaining Charleston tonight. That ball is a hair too hard. He's out of play for a Pittsburgh throw. Bob Lilly told us it was going to be a test tonight. Charleston had been much the better side to begin this game as Harmon lost his footing. Do clear it. Can they counter from this transition? Both coaches talked about how important it was going to be tonight. Mertz will lead Pittsburgh into the penalty area. Find an opening. Forbes comes to help. That's with two men on him here. Stood up by Dotson. The battery do come away with the ball. with a firm clearance, more definitive. Maybe the field hurts Charleston there. It takes a wicked hop out of play. And the Hounds get it back. It needs to be a bit cleaner for the River Hounds once they pass midway point. Too many times, whether it's Robbie Mertz, whether it's Carnado Forbes peeling out, they're on an island. You need to be a bit more connected in terms of that front line for Bob Lilly to give support system underneath Albert Dequa. Last time out for Pittsburgh in the league, a convincing 2-0 win over Detroit City. And Bob Lilly talked about how they scored at the right times in that game. Really kept Detroit City from really gaining any momentum throughout the game. And they were rather dominant. Did say they wanted to create a few more chances in that game. And we are seeing a, a lack of that at the start of this game. Charleston not having as much trouble here, and they win a free kick outside of the Riverhounds penalty area. Really good ball movement. How comfortable he is, but as, if you are, you are here, no need to dive in. The traffic right in front of you. 
give credit to Avila, does very well, feels right, the contact, Barry. goes down. We now, Charleston Battery have a very dangerous set piece. It sits nicely for an in-swinger. Nick Markanek, as Pittsburgh puts four men in the wall, will stand over this. Second on the team with seven goals this season. Markanek hits the wall. Win volleys it! And Waite palms it out of play for a corner. Beautifully struck by Declan Wynn. Well saved by Jamali Waite. The technique it takes to pull this off as this ball's coming over your right shoulder to cut it in half. Let that left foot sweeping motion up and over. But give credit to Jamali Waite. He's been massive between the sticks for the Riverhound to punch it up and away for a corner kick. Third save that Jamali Wade has had to make in the first 25 minutes. Charleston again, this is how they scored the goal. A set piece, Barajas again, it's headed down. It was deflected off the six yard line. Still not cleared, Avila's header. He's sent out of play and again, Pittsburgh. A little shaky inside the penalty area and Charleston nearly pounced again. Just nervy moments for the Riverhounds and set pieces. Quality service from Vidal Barajas. Left foot puts it right on top of that six yard box and causes chaos between the back line and Jamali Waite. If you're Ben Pierman, you want to get that secondary goal, especially on set pieces, because there is a lot to be had and a lot of success for your side. Well, Pittsburgh's 13 match unbeaten run looks under serious threat at the moment. Still just the one goal, of course, but seen a really nice surge here from the battery at the start of this game into the middle parts of the first half. That's the man that opened the scoring. Palma back to Muse. This is ball deep down the field to Shields. Ends up dealing with it in the end for Pittsburgh. Shields was also on the te uh, team of the week, I should say, for week 19. As well, had that assist for Pittsburgh against Detroit City last time out. Griffin out wide here for Harmon. First time ball in and the header is down. Brilliant save by Muse. Not sure how much he knew about it, but his reaction save keeps Pittsburgh out for now. And then Archer de clears more definitively on the back end. Now Williams for the battery. Inviting Barajas into the play. Allen through the middle. Barajas looking for win on the overlap. And it trickles out of play for a goal kick. What a wild sequence. What a brilliant opportunity this is for the Riverhounds. But watch the move by Albert Dequa as he peels off. That pulls out Leon Archer. And Ibar understands there's going to be a real estate. If I just advance myself from a deep line position, hits it extremely well. Like you said, Sean, I don't think that man knows anything about it. Stands his ground right off the knees. But what a massive save that is for Trey Muse to keep this lead intact. Well, a great riposte from Pittsburgh. No end product, but that is by far their best move of the game so far. Mark Ibarra who hasn't scored yet this season for Pittsburgh, nearly found the back of the net. Comes back down the other end here for a Charleston set piece opportunity. Is Emilio Icaza will send this in for Charleston. Flipping it again, looking for Dotson towards the back post. And in the end, a foul was committed and Pittsburgh can alleviate the pressure. But it's no coincidence for this Trevor Hound side. You get Danny Griffin on the ball, good things will happen. Willing runners in front of him. Dequa, Ibarra, Forbes spreading out, asking questions, testing the shape of the battery. And then it's Ibarra, a deep line position. No, those are so difficult to pick up if you're a defender. You need to have a lot of communication and a lot of rotation. Not something that was lacking for the battery in that instance. Trey Muse is there to save the day. Forward by Ibarra. And the battery 
deal with it at the back. Danny Griffin has one of the best stats in the entire USL championship. Since he turned pro back in 2020, he has not missed a league game, no matter what league he's been in. He was briefly in MLS Next Pro this season with Huntsville. But he's mostly been with Pittsburgh, and he just doesn't miss games. He barely misses minutes, let alone games for Charleston. Beg your pardon for Pittsburgh. He is one of the USL Championship's Iron Men. Key cog in the Bob Lilly system. The shields back for weight. Forward looking for Deco hasn't been very involved so far as being on the ball. Certainly getting a lot of attention as expected from the battery back line. Sent forward looking for Forbes. It's cut out. One back by Mertz. Griffin skates his way past one. Loves a little no look to Dequa. And Dequa is brought down. And that's a Riverhounds free kick. And Dequa's a little shaken up. Really clever there from Albert Dequa. Really good first touch as he baits Archer and then uses his body position to go back the other way. Use the contact, goes down, makes the most of it, that's for sure. Now the Riverhounds, brilliant opportunity about 30, 35 yards out of Muse's goal to ask questions of him. It appeared that Albert Dequa was holding his right ear at the tail end of that sequence, but appears for now is okay. There is a set piece chance here for Pittsburgh. Shot does come in and Muse has to field it off the bounce. Sometimes that can be tricky for goalkeepers, but Trey Muse, like a shortstop in the hole, makes a nice field on it. You need to hit it a bit better if you want to be the keeper of the quality of Trey Muse. Farrell, Williams lurking over his shoulder. Mertz sends that forward. Now the referee is going to send on the medical staff here. Maybe a possible head injury involving Danny Griffin. And it appears that's going to be the precursor for a hydro break here in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Hydro break is brought to you by Recover 180. Chance for both teams to do just that, to recover, to regroup, and for the Riverhounds, maybe to retool their game plan, Ricky. I think if you're Bob Lilly, you want them to get on the ball just a bit more. It's been all back and forth, route one football. So if you're Robbie Mertz, if you're Danny Griffin, put your foot on the ball, move the ball from left to right, and get the confidence within the side. It's been not your best performance, 33 minutes in, but for Charleston Battery, I think if you're Ben Pierman, the question mark and exclamation that you're asking your boys is, how can we capitalize on set piece opportunities? Ibarra, excuse me, Barajas with that left foot putting quality service in. So how do you get on the end of it and get your lead into two? Juan Sebastian Palma opened the scoring with this brilliant header. But it just goes unmarked. Starts right around that penalty mark as there's players running near post. He just stands his ground, beats Mike to shields off of his line. And it's a terrific header. Take nothing away from the center back, looking like a striker. And it's off to the corner to celebrate. His first goal of the season, not a much better time to get it than in this big game tonight in front of a great crowd at Patriots Point Soccer Stadium. It's been a really thrilling contest so far, but we've only seen the one big chance for Pittsburgh from their side of things, the Ibarra header. That was parried away by Trey Muse, who didn't know a ton about it, but he knew enough about it to react and get it out of harm's way for Charleston. And now we'll see if Bob Lilly can get a reaction out of the Riverhounds here. You could see his encouraging claps there and his speech for Pittsburgh to try and get the Riverhounds back on track, trying to continue their unbeaten run. Again, 13 games unbeaten for Pittsburgh coming into this game. It's the second best run like it 
the 04 Hounds had 15 games unbeaten to finish the USL Pro Soccer League season. That's the mark they're trying to equal. But Charleston has them up against it in the first half. The Battery are back at Patriots Point on Saturday, August 4th, facing the Oakland Roots. Tickets are available now via SeatGeek, the Battery's exclusive ticketing provider. Get your tickets now and save up to $10 per seat when you buy in advance at tickets.charlestonbattery.com today. Be another big contest. Oakland looking to try to turn a corner in the Western Conference themselves. They always seem to make a late season run, the Oakland Roots. Pittsburgh nearly give that away. It's a late challenge from Robbie Mertz. Yellow card is out. It might be coming Robbie Mertz's way here. And it is confirmed. Robbie Mertz is in the book. With about 10 minutes left in the first half. Just sloppy from the Riverhounds trying to play between the lines. Danny Griffin just takes his eye off of it. Avila gets it right before Robbie Mertz, and it's, a, it's emergency defending from the center midfielder. But now in 36 minutes in on a yellow card, what does it look like in terms of his discipline and his positioning in the center of the park for Bob Lilly? Yellow card is brought to you by Sphinx Convenience Stores located across South Carolina. And now Pittsburgh have another set piece to contend with here. Same duo. Rajas again, runs off of it. Ikaza will take it, serving it into the penalty here. And again, it was up for grabs. Falls for Allen, chipping it back amongst the teammates. And then Wade had to punch it, not definitively away. Flag is up. Leland Archer, it looks like, was in an offside position. And the attack fizzles out for the hosts. Again, just not convincing. For this back line of the Riverhounds. And Archer comes up and tests. Can only wait, doesn't get enough on it. Fortunate enough for the Riverhounds offside. Ibarra has come the closest for Pittsburgh so far. Harmon on the overlap, Ibarra looking centrally. Brings it towards the far post, it's headed down. Not to a teammate in the end and the Riverhounds will recycle. De Shields, for Griffin. Ibarra comes all the way back to help out Farrell. He serves it into the penalty area, looking for Harmon, but too close to Muse. Just no need. Trying to play in behind. You see 11 players for the battery in their own defensive path, so there's no real state in behind. Have to play between lines, circulate. Watch out. Williams gets away from Farrell. He has help here, Augie Williams, but he doesn't use it. And Joey Farrell didn't give up on the play and is able to make amends. Just makes a wrong decision in the end there, Williams. He has Avila free on the far side. Built selfish from the striker as he draws in. Joey Farrell and Mike DeShields, you need to dish it off to your oncoming winger. He does the hard work. Just played into his path. Out wide by Mertz as the sun pokes through here in Mount Pleasant. Swung in. Balls for Harmon on this near side. Harmon or Donez. Back for Harmon. Is he brought down? It looks like he was. Yes, win. Penalized. It's a free kick. I hear Ben Pierman not agreeing with the decision, but it is a Riverhound set piece. It's a bit of lazy defending here from Declan Wynn. Easy Harmon sets him up extremely nice, and it's a secondary touch right here that sends him off packing. Not a, not, not a lot of contact, but definitely makes the most of it DZ Harmon to win a dangerous set piece for his side. Harmon, one of three Pittsburgh players who used to play for Charleston. Failing and Patrick Hogan as well. Hogan is available tonight off the bench for Bob Lilly. Mertz from the free kick. It in towards the back post. It falls for Griffin. Still Griffin! Oh, great save by Muse. Still alive here. Mertz on a recycle. And maybe it did go out in the end. Well, 
Danny Griffin found a hole through Charleston's back line, but Trey Muse plugged it up. They do very well to deal with this initial ball in, but as Danny Griffin picks up this ball, the ability to create your own space as a player is so important. As eyes for that far post, but what a massive and fantastic save that is from Trey Muse. Lunch himself down to his left hand side like a cat. That's two out of two saves for that man, and he's been massive 40 minutes in for the home side. He really did claw it out, didn't he? To your <laughs> point. Second great save by Trey Muse. He knew all about that one. And you could see why he was in the USL Championships Team of the Week last week. He is in very sharp form for the battery. No, if you're the battery, a bit of a warning sign now that Danny Griffin has the ability to shoot from distance, right foot, left foot. So the secondary action, the secondary balls, you have to have players step up and close down that space between him, Danny Griffin, excuse me, Robbie Mertz, Cronardo Forbes. They don't need a second invitation to pull the trigger from 25 yards in. Forbes and Mertz linking up. Some space for Griffin to work with. He chips it into the penalty area, looking for Forbes. Ikaza comes out with it for Charleston and then nearly dribbled himself into trouble. And in the end, he does give possession away with five minutes left in the half. Dequa tried to find a teammate. It was cut out. And the Riverhounds reset the possession here. Griffin to Shields. It's going centrally, Rivera to Shields. We tried to sliver it through. Falls for Ibarra. Ibarra's shot is blocked by the goal scorer, Palma. This has been much better from the Riverhounds these last few minutes. There's been glimpses. Can they get back on level terms before the half ends? He sees a rash challenge from Allen, but plays advantage here. DZ Harmon nearly overruns the ball. Ordonez pushing and chasing it to the byline, sweeping it into the penalty area, looking for Dequa, who's able to pick it up. Dequa for Forbes. Forbes back out wide, and the cross from Rivera is blocked. Rivera again keeps it alive. Forbes, Rivera, good build up from Pittsburgh here. Can they get a chance from it? Looking for Dequa inside the penalty area. Couldn't really wrap his head around it. Still not definitively cleared. Ordonez. Near side, Ibarra. Donez has a few options here. Ibarra is one of them. Ibarra looking for Griffin, and Griffin's first touch eludes him, but Charleston's clearance gives it right back to Bob Lilly's side. And having a very difficult time for this battery side to pick and choose when to try to play out of the back, but also just when to clear your lines. Too many times if you're Allen there, Palma moments ago, just trying to pick out a pass. They're under a lot of pressure for the last three, four, five minutes. The ball down the field gains some real estate because the Riverhound side, as they grow in confidence, they're going to ask a lot of questions of your defensive structure. Mertz in for Dequa, who lays it off for Ibarra, and then Harmon just out of his reach. Nearly had a chance to score against his former club there, DZ Harmon, but couldn't make contact with it. Just wanted a bit more at the moment, this Riverhound side, as his ball pick gets picked up by Robbie Mertz. This is so good from Albert Dequa to make his run from inside out, but also as this back line for the batteries retreating, he understands there's real estate. If I cut this ball back, Ibarra, great first touch, which is a bit heavy on the ball into DC Harmon, who's hanging around this far post. You start to see the ideas and the creativity for this Riverhound start to come out as this half progresses. been a good finish to the half so far for Pittsburgh. They still trail. Palma's goal back in the 11th minute. The assist from Fidel Barajas. That was his sixth assist of the season, by the way. And that 
puts Barajas right at the top of the assist, assist charts, I should say, in the USL Championship, right towards the top of the statistics there. Williams, as Ikaza for company. Nice skill there from Ikaza, and he's able to slip it all the way through to Williams with some help from Barajas. Williams for Markanek, and it's too far in the end. You can get in behind of Robbie Martin, Danny Griffin. It's not a midfielder, it's for the Riverhounds. There's going to be a lot of success and a lot of real estate to operate in for the battery side. But again, not clean enough in that final third between Mechanic, Mechanic, excuse me, and Huggy Williams. And Huggy Williams making a run centrally. Mechanic makes this run from inside out, just a bit heavy on the ball once again. Well, live it looked like the ball had rolled out before the Pittsburgh defender put a boot on it, but a corner's been given here for Charleston. It's crawling towards the back post and it's dealt with Ibarra though. Takes it away from Wade who wanted him to let him get it. Pittsburgh come the other way. There was a player down behind the play and the battery do regain possession. We're now into four added minutes. Stoppage time is brought to you by MUSC Health Sports Medicine. Four minutes. Four added minutes to conclude a very intriguing first half between two of the top teams in the East. Wait clears the lines for Pittsburgh. Well, let's tap forward to Williams. Flag is staying down for now, and Williams scores. Charleston lead by two goals to nil. Well, it looks initially like Augie Williams may have been offside, but the goal's been given, and the battery are 2 0 up. It is a sparkling finish from Augie Williams, brought to you by Diamonds Direct. And it's a great finish to the first half for the battery. Two to the good. As this ball pops back out, top of your screen, you're going to see Mike DeShields a bit slow in stepping up with his center back. But I think Augie Williams is caught offside about by a yard. I know he sees it, doesn't raise his flag right there. I think it's clear and obvious the center fo forward, but take nothing away from that finish. 1v1 as Waits coming off of his line, closes up his hips at the last second, just ropes this thing into that near post. And Charleston Battery, question marks or not, they get their second goal right before halftime. Ninth goal of the campaign for Augie Williams. And as you talked about, Ricky, looked live and on the replay that there was a big suspicion of offside. Of course, we do not have VAR, no way to go back and check it, officially, of course. And the goal stands. Well, a hill has turned into a mountain to climb now for the Riverhounds, despite their great play at the end of this half. Still a couple minutes left for them to maybe find a response. Mertz looking for Forbes. Forbes curls it in. Koenig, not quite able to clear it properly, and it's out for a Riverhounds corner. Oh, lovely scenes here in Patriots Point. Gorgeous night in Mount Pleasant. Charleston leading 2-0 and defending this set-piece opportunity. Palma's head. Mertz trying to re-enter it. Does take a deflection. Mertz keeps it. But Charleston do win it back. It's a lovely ball played through for Williams, who might have a chance here from Barajas. Hockey Williams waiting for support. Plays in a lovely ball. Ibarra on the scene. And Avila is snuffed out in the end. Good transition moment for both sides. Charleston Battery seem like they have eyes for their third goal, trying to catch out the Riverhounds. They give credit to Ibarra. Griffin and Mertz do their defensive duties and slow down Ivala. 
on that far side. But give credit to Augie Williams. You start to see how alive he's been, the ability to make the right runs at the right time. Harmon, about 20 seconds left in the half. Two men on him, DZ Harmon, and he is stood up. But he gets it back and nearly found Dequa. But it does slither its way through to Trey Muse. And it's going to use up almost the entirety of stoppage time that remains to corral it. We have had the four added minutes at the end of the half here in South Carolina. Muse clears and the half ends. Pittsburgh's 13 match unbeaten run is in serious jeopardy at the half here in South Carolina. Brilliant half from Ben Pierman's boys here. The battery leading by two goals to nil. One with no debate surrounding it, the other with plenty. But the Charleston battery are in pole position here after the first 45 minutes, Ricky. I think let's start with the Riverhounds. It just needs to be cleaner from back to front, cleaner and winning your individual duel, stepping together and being more compact. And when you go higher up the field, just be cleaner in terms of your decision making. For River, for the home side, keep asking questions. Try to get that third in the first five minutes out of the break. Well, this game has lived up to the billing so far. The top team in the East has a big challenge on their hands at the break here in South Carolina. Charleston leading their rivals by two goals to nil. Plenty to come at the half from South Carolina. There's a brand new morning Rising clear and sweet and free There's a new day This is your vacation, your beach, your fields of green, skies of blue, mountains of majesty. You're an athlete, you're obsessed, you're in love, you're in pain, spirit drained, in agony, fighting gravity, because you made a commitment to yourself and others to work on your game, build your frame, in blazing heat, exhausted and beat, because when you refuse to yield, your spirit is revealed. You are an athlete. MUSC Health Sports Medicine. Estimated haul time is now 96 minutes. Sorry, are you still there? Yes. Okay, please hold. Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. John St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez, Espen back here with you at the half. Charleston leading Pittsburgh by two goals to nil. And Pittsburgh's 13 match unbeaten run is in jeopardy. Big 45 minutes still to come. But here at the half, we begin by taking a look at what Charleston's been up to this summer. And throughout the summer, players from the Battery have visited library locations all over the Charleston area to read stories to children as well as introduce them to soccer by teaching them some basic skills. Great stuff there that Charleston has been doing and that leads us into upcoming schedules for both teams and Ricky we look at what's coming up for Pittsburgh and it really is a tough tough slate they continue to have big games upcoming as they try to stay off everybody at top of the east. But a good thing for Bob Lee and company they're all at home in the 11 Memphis Tampa and Hartford and then you go out west to Orange County so again it's really important to pick up points on this road here for Bob Lilly's side because that first four games at home, if you can pick up massive points, that's going to propel you a bit higher. And then you have the one big out Western Conference and Orange County still figuring out what they're all about. Yeah, Pittsburgh unbeaten at home this season at high mark. So those teams will have a very tough test coming up as July 
turns into August. And again, Orange County are turning the tide. Make no mistake about that. And this is what I was talking about earlier throughout the summer, Charleston, visiting those library locations and reading stories to children as well as introducing them to soccer by teaching them some basic skills as well. Really cool to see them get out in the community and making an impact as well. Very, very cool things there for the battery. And we're hoping that they can continue to do that throughout the rest of the campaign as well. Here tonight, the battery leading by two goals to nil against Pittsburgh. More to come after the break. Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Charles St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez Espin back here with you at the break. The battery leading Pittsburgh by two goals to nil. They're in pole position to pick up three huge points. We'll see if Bob Lilly's boys can come from behind in the second half. But first and foremost here during this halftime segment, we take a look at the news and notes from around the USL championship. So much going on. Again, the races in both leagues have been so good as well. Big milestone for Aiden Quinn, who just recently passed 20,000 regular season minutes. We'll see if Canardo Forbes can get to that mark in the second half. But the Hounds, 13 game unbeaten run, Ricky is in serious jeopardy. Need to get it going here in this next 45 minutes, but you go down one USL and ESPN2, the switchbacks against FC Tulsa. That's going to be very interesting. Stephen Hogan's Colorado Springs switchbacks, they go to Phoenix Rising here tonight. So what does that look like? Because that's a team that's hot and cold, so they need to get going, especially at home. We'll see if Tulsa can continue to move in the right direction with Philip Goodrum leading the way as well as the Charleston Airport brings you the scoreboard at uh, around the league, I should say, at the moment. And we talked about Charleston leading at the moment, Indy in action as well. Right now, they are trying to get a big result as well. And Lou City at home also trying to get back on track after a tough loss against Detroit as well. Upcoming schedule, talked about it later on tonight, Ricky. Phoenix in Colorado Springs is a big one. Huge one in Vegas as well. The Lights trying to keep pace in the West. And of course, El Paso taking on Oakland. I think New Mexico hosting Sacramento Republic. That one's gonna be very interesting. Mark Briggs and company doing extremely well on this campaign. Memphis are hosting Orange County. Memphis, again, 
have been hot and cold. They went on a massive run, but got smacked by Phoenix Rising on ESPN2. But then the one that I think is the highlight of the match, Phoenix Rising, Colorado Springs switchback, Sean. That one's going to be very interesting. Juan Garrett, Stephen Ogan know each other very good. So we'll see how their field do on the field. And Miami, your reward for dropping points at the death, San Antonio away. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see if they can bounce back after a tough one against Charleston last time out. Well, Pittsburgh needs to bounce back at the half here with the battery leading by two goals to nil. Big 45 minutes still to come in the low country. Highlights and stats are next. This is no sleepy headed and moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Four thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina, now that's smart. Hey Google, turn up the heat. Charleston is located in the low country of South Carolina. The history here, it runs deep and you can't imagine being any place else. This place is magical. Tonight's match is brought to you by South Carolina Education Lottery. Did you know that more than 40, 480,000 lottery funded scholarships and grants have been awarded to students in the low country since 2002? For more information, visit sceducationlottery.com slash education wins. Sean St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez Espin rejoining you here at the half. First half highlights between the battery and Pittsburgh. Ricky, we pick it up in the 11th minute with Ben Pierman's side taking the lead. But talk about a quality ball in from Barajas and Palma, the center back just rises up like a salmon. It makes no mistake about the header. Over his left shoulder, down and hard to that far post. No chance for Jamali Wayne. That's something that, if you're Bob Blue, you're gonna be a bit frustrated with because you didn't start this game quietly well defensively, and this is the best opportunity as Ibarra comes from a deep lying position. But Trey Mew stands his ground and it plays rewards for the goalkeeper between the sticks for the home side. 39th minute, more good pressure from Pittsburgh, but no end product. Danny Griffin, the ability to create your own space as he pulls it back. What a massive save once again. You start to see the power step from his right leg to propel him to his left hand side. Have the ability, the athleticism, but also the wear belt to push it up and away. For Trey Muse, he's been massive. Then in the 45th, some offside controversy, but it leads to the Charleston second goal. Yeah, clear cut offside. You see Augie Williams about a yard behind Mike the Shields, but if you're a center back, you have to be able to step up with your other two center backs. As you get caught out, Augie Williams makes no mistake about the finish, cool as you would like, and off to the corner. Charleston Battery had their lead, two goals to nil. Heineken halftime stats look like this. A lot of chances for both teams, but Charleston have been more clinical, and again, they got a little bit of a help from the assistant. And I think it all comes down to moments. Who's going to be more clinical in both boxes, attacking and, and defensively? And for the Riverhounds, if you can get one goal in the next five to ten minutes, it's going to make things very interesting as the second half progresses. But for Ben Pierman, if you win any single set piece in around that 18-yard box, you ask questions, you test this back line of the Riverhounds. We talked about it throughout the match. The battery for the first 25 minutes, roughly, were much the better side in this game. Ben Pierman's boys 
more than up for the occasion, and they got their reward with Palma's opening goal. Then Pittsburgh started to show themselves more, played much better in the next 15 minutes. The big chances from Ibarra, from Griffin as well, but they couldn't find the back of the net. And then again, Augie Williams scores, should have been offside. Yes, it wasn't given, no VAR, we move on, 2-0. And now we see if Bob Lilly's boys can find the same momentum at the tail end of that first half instead of what we saw from the first segment of the first half in that beginning. And I think it just starts with Danny Griffin and Robbie Mertz. Get on the ball a bit more, pull the string from a deep blank position, and then you're going to start to see Albert Dequa get more service. And we talk about him, how clinical can he be? 10 goals on the campaign because you want him to be in around that 18-yard box and be confident and want the ball. So it's going to be a big second half for the attacking phase for Bob Lilly's side. Pittsburgh does make a halftime alteration. Junioretu is on. Danny Rivera exits for Bob Lilly's group. Etu did score against Charleston in the first meeting inside of a minute. We'll see if he can come on and provide the Riverhounds with a bit of a spark in the second half in the rematch. Never easy coming into, the, into a match at halftime. So again, Complete your first couple passes, get a clean first touch, and as you start to get the confidence and get in the rhythm, that's when you can express yourself into that final third because Junior Etsu has a very good feel of when and where to be in that final third. The battery are in the box seat at the halftime interval. The second half is underway. Pittsburgh controls in their gray and yellows. Charleston in their changed orange strips, and they might not Take them off again if they keep playing like this. And they have a 2-0 lead against Pittsburgh at the break. Sean St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez Espin, happy to have you with us here. And he's gonna be an exciting second half between these two. We'll see if Pittsburgh can claw their way back into this game. The battery were so good for about half an hour. And Pittsburgh did start to show much better at the tail end, but Charleston slightly more clinical is where we stand right now, and Pittsburgh's 13-match unbeaten run is in trouble. I think it's going to be very interesting, Sean, for this Charleston battery side. Yes, you're up 2-0 in the first half, so what does it look like mentally? Do you sit back and just absorb pressure? Do you go out and try to get the third? At two's ball across is a decent ball, better than decent. It's still up for grabs, and Charleston cleared out for a corner. Well, there's a nice little move there from the substitute at two and it leads to a set piece for Pittsburgh. And it just gives them a different look going forward from a wide area. This Riverhound side, Nuretsu, was very well to pick up DZ Harmon at that far post, but that first touch from the opposite wing back just a bit heavy to give the battery the ability to clear their lines. Robbie Mertz from the corner for Pittsburgh. It's a low hit ball nearly towards Farrell, who does pick it up, but then Fidel Barajas takes it away and clears. And Pittsburgh will have to reset. Robbie Mertz, another one of the Pittsburgh players who's been dealing with injuries over the last few weeks. Mertz and Deco were kind of in and out of the lineup around the same portion. Mertz tries to get on the end of this ball over the top next to Dequa. Easy enough for Trey Muse, who came up with a couple of big stops in the first half for Charleston. result were to hold, Charleston would get up to 10 wins on the season. Only Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay in the East have that many. And Charleston would jump up into second place. Rowdies do have a game in hand, but Charleston would be within two points of Pittsburgh on the same amount of games played. And that in itself is why this game is important on top of the rivalry and all the things around it. Well, we've hit the 48th minute mark, and that means Canardo Forbes has reached another milestone tonight. 20,000 minutes in his career on his 250th cap. 
in the USL Championship. We already talked about how great he was in the first half, Ricky, so I ask you one more time to shower King Kenny <laughs> with more compliments. Just massive. I mean, it's not very often that you get one milestone, let alone two, in the same game. But again, it's so important to put an emphasis on just the ability to take care of yourself. It's an old saying that the best ability is availability, and that's something that King Kenny, him and Robbie Mertz, or excuse me, Danny Griffin in the center of the park for Bob Lee's side have really embodied you can count on them, they're consistent in their play and approaches every single training session, gym session, game, like it's their last. And that's a, that's a reason why he's been able to hit those highly unmarked well, milestones. So again, not only his play socks for himself, but just off the field, I think is so impressive for Canardo Forbes. Both of those marks are really rarefied air in the USL Championship. Not many have hit. 250 appearances and 20,000 minutes. I'm not sure which one's more impressive. Maybe the minutes by a hair for the appearances. Both are extremely, extremely incredible milestones for Canardo Forbes to hit. And again, like you said, Ricky, do it in the same game is remarkable. I think if you ask him, he can throw those milestones away because he wants all three points here tonight and he needs to get going. He needs to get on the ball a bit more now for Bob Lee's side. Charleston have a throw in here. Dotson for Williams. He's now on nine goals this season for the battery after his late first half strike. Archer is cross deflected. Dequa dispossessed by Markanik. And then it is back at the feet of Griffin. Griffin tries to curl one into the path of Etu. His legs are fresh. Two's ball into the middle is deflected. Canardo Forbes chipping it towards the back post, and Dico couldn't quite get to it. Harmon can get to it. Donez trying to serve it into the penalty area. Easy enough for Ikaza. Donez slides it out of play for a Charleston throw. The battery have a brand new look on and off the field this year, thanks to Hummel official jersey provider. Check out the full line of new battery gear, including the custom 2023 primary, secondary, and alternate kits by visiting shop.charlestonbattery.com. Etu for Mertz. Griffin. Griffin out wide for Harmon. Harmon into the middle, it's Mertz! And Mertz is stopped by Muse. Out it goes for a corner. I think Archer may have also been in there as well. As you overload centrally for this Riverhound side, the space opens up on the wide areas. DZ Harmon understands if I get myself in a dangerous area, Danny Griffin is going to find me. But this run from Robbie Mertz is so important because it does two things, Sean. You get on the end of it, it's an easy goal. If not, it pulls out a center back for a secondary action. But give credit to Archer and Muse, they come across that near post and deny Robbie Mertz an opening goal. Mertz from the corner, and it was scraped across by Ordonez, kept alive by Dequa for Forbes. Forbes back in, it's headed centrally, and Williams clears. More dangerous play from Pittsburgh, but they can't quite get it over the line. DeShields back in, looking for Ibarra, and Allen cuts it out. Another close call for Charleston, and Pittsburgh can't get one back in the end. The only thing that is lacking is that final action for the Riverhounds. Forbes does so well to collect himself, because so many players, when that ball pops off, you hit it first time. With the English on it, your balance is all off. You have the ability to pick up Joey Farrell at that far post. But then again, someone needs to be crashing, essentially. There's been three or four of those close calls now for Pittsburgh. More encouraging signs for the Riverhounds. Forbes. It's a dangerous pass, but he's able to thread the needle for Farrell. Into Shields resets. Pings one forward, looking for Mertz. Etu around the back, trying to pressure Dotson. He does go out of play, and it'll stay with the Hounds. Oh 
Dequa. Mertz wins a free kick. A couple of the battery players and I think even Ben Pierman were saying that Mertz did not keep it in. He's a free kick for the Hounds. We will get another look at it. Well, tough to tell from that angle. And the ball has to be all the way over the line. In the end, it is a set piece opportunity here for Pittsburgh. Arnold Forbes is sitting on 49 Pittsburgh River Hounds assists in his career. Curling in the ball, Muse was fouled in the end as he punched it away, and it's a battery free kick. That's really good goalkeeping there from Trey Muse. Comes off his line extremely decisive, and he knows he's going to take contact with the traffic in front of him. It's a handful of the ball to punch it up and away to draw the foul. In the end, you talk about one shy from 50 assists for the Riverhounds for Cronado Forbes. Talk about three milestones. That would have been massive. That's a confident goalkeeping on, I just mentioned from that young man. Forbes was tied for the league lead this season in assists coming into the game. And one of the men he was tied with, Fidel Barajas, is now ahead of him, of course, with that first half assist on the goal by Juan Sebastian Palma. First of two for Charleston. He's still trying to break as many records as he can in his career. Canardo Forbes and setting new marks, and reaching milestone after milestone. Rahas tried to wriggle his way through. Pittsburgh closed him down. And now Williams could be in again here for the battery. Williams saved by weight. And on the follow-up, it should be three. It is three. Well, Jamali Wade kept the first one out. But the second is a very nice finish in the end. Avila makes it 3-0 to the battery. And Pittsburgh could see their 13 game unbeaten run end in the low country tonight. It's another dazzling finish brought to you by Diamonds Direct. Wade did everything he could on the first one, but he was a sitting duck on the second attempt. And Ben Pierman's boys are in dreamland, it's three nil. Play off the shoulder of your opposing center backs, good things happen for Augie Williams as he gets a bit of luck. But talk about his body control, put himself between him and Mike DeShields. And as the center back needs to let him go, big time save from Jamali Wade. But talk about composure from Avila as his ball pops off. Do you understand? Use the momentum against Ordonia is there. Send him packing as well as Wade. And has an easy finish for a player of that quality. We talked about how important that third goal was going to be in this match. Charleston Battery come off the gate flying. Dream start to the second half for Ben Pierman. Second goal of the campaign for that man, Roberto Avila. And it could be curtains for Pittsburgh. Well, we expected a really hotly contested contest. I don't think anybody saw this scoreline with just over half an hour to go. And in some ways, it's not deserved for Charleston as Etu is offside here. That second goal had controversy around it. However, the two in particular have been really well worked and the battery on the whole have been worth the lead, no question about that. Well, ben Pierman must be absolutely thrilled with the way his boys have handled this big occasion. Maybe should have mentioned it earlier, Ben Pierman talked about needing maybe a little bit of luck tonight. He's gotten that, and he's gotten a fantastic performance as well. And Pittsburgh are very much against the ropes here. Ibarra for Harmon. Harmon's ball across is dangerous, but it's too close to the goalkeeper, Muse. The other interesting stat to note is that Charleston came into this game with a negative goal differential. They've changed that, and they could be right on Pittsburgh's heels at the top of the East. 
if they can see the rest of this game out. Another look at the finish. But as Joey Farrell steps off this line, look at the lack of rotation between the Shields and Ordonez. If you play three center backs, if one steps off the line, the other two by textbook, they need to draw in centrally. As they are slow to realize that, that gives the real estate for Augie Williams, and it's off to the corner to celebrate for Avila. But again, it's just sloppy defensive one-on-one -on -one mistakes, whether it's a set piece, whether it's slow and stepping in with your other two center backs, or just your third one, slow in rotation, understanding. As one steps off, the other two need to provide that coverage. So if you're Bob Lynn, you go back and watch this film. Those are unexcusable mistakes for the quality and the experience between the back line of the Riverhounds. Pittsburgh came into the night with 10 clean sheets, top mark in the USL championship in that category. And tonight they've been undone by the battery as the flag is up against Augie Williams for offside. Of course, they were tied for the fewest goals conceded with Sacramento. Coming into the night as well with 12, that's now up to 15. Better there from the shield to understand to hold his run to let Augie Williams venture offside. The one streak that has ended for Pittsburgh tonight was their run of not conceding a goal in four games. They had gotten up to over 400 minutes in league play without conceding a goal. That was undone within 11 minutes here tonight. And since then, the battery, despite some really good play at times from Pittsburgh. That's why the score line's a bit misleading. Taking the reins here. With half an hour to play, are very much in charge in the low country. It's a rivalry between these two that dates back to 1999. That was Pittsburgh's inaugural season of existence. And there have been some great games played between the two in the years that have followed. This has been Charleston's night so far. Bob Lilly is going to make some changes, it appears. Multiple players are up. Juan Obregon, as well as Edward Kizza. And I think I saw Langston Blackstock there as well. There's maybe three upcoming for the Hounds. We will see. deep in the corner here, pressured by Forbes and company. Does go out of play for a goal kick. Etu was helping out as well. And at the moment, it just seems like it could be one of those nights for Pittsburgh where it's just not happening for them. But Bob Lilly, he's not one to lie down. He's going to make some changes here to try to get his team back in it. We'll see Juan Obregon Jr., one of the new additions for Pittsburgh. Langston Blackstock comes on as well. Edward Kizza is also going to enter with a triple change here. Saw Robbie Mertz coming off. He was on a yellow card. His night is done. Joey Farrell came off a little bit earlier. On that first change, and it appears that the great night for Individual milestones, maybe not for team performance for Canaro Forbes, comes to a close. We talked about it, Ricky. He'll be thrilled down the line in his life to meet those markers, but tonight it'll be frustration for him and for the rest of his team so far. Just haven't had the ability to get going in terms of just the fluidity that we've come to expect from this Riverhound side. Especially playing between lines. We had seem comfortable. And that's something that if you're Bob Lilly, you're going to be scratching your head about. The talent is there, no questions asked. The form is there, the confidence is there. Just hasn't been the best performance when you walk across that white line. Bob Lilly had a word with each substitute, it looked like, on their way out. And with the boys that came off for them as well. Edward Kizza. He's tied for second on the team with three goals scored this season for Pittsburgh. So we'll see if him along with the other 
fresh changes for the River Hounds can maybe get Pittsburgh back within striking distance. We will see. Threaded through there, cut out. Obregon Jr. was making the run. Markanek trying to play in Augie Williams, who's onside this time. Williams looking for some help. Cross into the middle, blocked by Ordonez. Let the battery keep it on this end of the pitch. So this, the night in a nutshell for the Riverhounds. And that's just shields in. And you had to go for the same ball. That lets this man come around the corner. Mykanic understands. She plays into the path. And then it's emergency defenders. But give credit to Ordonez to come across and not leave his feet. And not let this ball get himself into a dangerous area. Dotson's throw cut out and cleared. Kaza. There's some pressure from Kiza. Leland Archer is in support. It'll be a different look now for the Riverhounds. As you have Chignoretus drop back into that back line of three. That's going to put Obergon Jr. as a wing back on this near side. That by side, Black Sox. As well as the wing back, that's going to push DZ Harmon into a more advanced position. Showing a bit of versatility for Bob Lilly as the substitutions come on. Allen, 25 minutes left. Ikaza. Pressure from Edward Kizza. Kaza is fouled. Free kick for the battery. Barov bundles over Ikaza. We're both just taking a look around the league at the other games, Ricky. Indy nil, Tampa Bay nil. What oh, a yellow card came out there, looks like, for was it Ikaza. Looked like it was on the back end of that. Maybe a word was said to referee Matthew Corrigan. It's a Sphinx yellow card that comes out there. But again, latter stages in Indy. Nil-nil between them and the Rowdies. Lou City need a big time response against Birmingham. They lead at home by a goal to nil. Memphis leading Orange County 2-1. 25 minutes in to that game. And in Hamtramck, it is Detroit City nil. Monterey Bay nil. And right after Ikaza picks up the yellow card, he continues to have words with Matthew Corrigan. He is going to be substituted here for the former Monterey Bay man. Robbie Crawford, the Scotsman, comes on for the latter stages here for Ben Pierman's boys. I thought he was very good. 67 minutes in, a bit frustrated to walk off the field. His relationship between him and Allen in the center of the park for Charleston Battery have been spot on in terms of their relationship as one steps one drops in but this man Bobby Crawford he comes in you talk about the career that he's had the ability to play different positions Williams played in by Barajas oh Augie Williams tries to volley it Barajas wanted the return and in the end it is sent swirling over the top of the bar he's having such a field day just playing in between the outside center back and the central center back but again, it's just slow. Once again, the shields. Ordonia slow in rotation to drop back. But if you're Augie Williams, you have to let this ball drop a bit more to get more contact on it. As you take it early, that's why you see it go up and over the bar. So many times, he's getting, be he's getting the better body position of the shields in a more central location. Well, Bob Lilly, we asked him about 
players they needed to try and deal with and slow down. Augie Williams and Fidel Barajas were the first two players he named. And they have both been tremendous for the battery tonight. They have not been able to slow them down. We talked about Avila as well, and he's on the score sheet. So the players that Bob Lilly had identified for his team to try and neutralize have all had big nights, unfortunately, from a Pittsburgh point of view. But for Charleston, it's been a tremendous performance so far. against Williams, free kick to Shields with the challenge. In front of his coach, Ben Pierman. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Sean. As this ball comes back across, Shields just uh, gets exposed. As he comes to the byline, he's a center back. There's no need. Your center back needs to be this wide up the field. There needs to be Junior Etsu challenging for that ball. As Williams understands, there's contact going to be had. Makes the most of it. All right, Barry, please. Get the center switch going. Let's get the energy up. Let's go. We're on three zero. Let's go. Come on, fans. We joked earlier that Ben Pierman talked to us about how they needed a little bit of luck tonight against the Riverhounds. They did get a little bit, but it really has been the performance as a whole that has stood out. The Shields was booked for that last challenge, and now Pittsburgh look to get one back, and they do! The former Charleston Battery player, DZ Harmon, with a scorching effort. And the Riverhounds have a goal back with 20 minutes to play. It's 3-1. There's still time for Pittsburgh, and it's one of the old battery players who comes back to haunt them. They want to be expansive. They want to get numbers in around that 18-yard box, but give credit to Blackstock. First of all, great first touch, and as he just rolls this ball into the path of DC Harmon, there's information on this ball. You need to hit it first time. Just opens up his hips and ropes it into that near post. Well taken finish in Pittsburgh Riverhounds. They get their first goal on the day. Pittsburgh has had plenty of moments like that tonight, but that one comes off for them. And now another potential duo of head injuries here has stopped the play. One player from each team stays down here. We hope both battery. players are okay. It happened pretty quickly. It's been awkward of coming together between the two players. There's no ill will there. As Avila takes a play on it, just undercuts with the shields. This does lead us to a recover 180 hydro break. We had a hydro break in the first half, of course, as well. The concern is really on the two players down to Shields for Pittsburgh, who is able to sit up, which is good to see. Nowadays, you really can never be too careful with these kinds of moments. You can see concern on Ben Pierman's face. Well, you can hear Ben Pierman there <laughs> saying he's actually going to make three changes. We'll see if that ends up materializing. We always want to get confirmation, of course, before we pass that information along. But we could hear him on our field mic on that near side. We will see if Ben Pierman follows through on that. The Shields comes off, and Avila was the Charleston player who was involved, and now he's back to his feet. And 
This is what we've seen, Ricky, in the second half as far as goals. This was actually technically late in the first half from Augie Williams to make it 2-0. It's been so good at just understanding the moments and where to be for Augie Williams. As Jamali waits coming off his line, there's a plethora of options. Just it elects to go near post, and this is just Pittsburgh Riverhound football at its finest. If you change your point of attack, you have a deep playing run. DJ Harmon, while we finish, as we set up 3 1. 74th minute. If you're Bob Lilly, you're asking questions of your boy's character to fight back in terms of just raising the intensity, getting on the ball a bit more. You want to get Danny Griffin, you want to get Obergon Jr. on the ball because we've seen. The quality that he's had, whether it's at, at Hartford Athletic, how can he get involved? How can he get fluid? And, and how can he get confident, especially in that final third? Because he can, he's going to be an X factor going forward for this Riverhound side. Avila scored in the second half as well for Charleston, which has them up by two, despite that DZ Harmon reply. Of course, these injury stoppages are going to impact stoppage time. At the end of this game, Augie Williams has been right in the middle of things tonight in a positive manner for the battery. As Ben Pierman's sign, hope to see this out and end Pittsburgh's 13 game unbeaten run. Do the Riverhounds have a late run in them to try and halt that attempt in its tracks? The battery. As we heard Ben Pierman say, are going to make some changes here. Tristan Traeger is getting set to come on. Another player that Bob Lilly had highlighted to us earlier in the week. Yeridi looks like he's going to get ready to come on as well. Number two in orange. And the third player, he's the hero from the Miami game. Last time out, Andrew Booth. So just got the full confirmation on the three changes. Avila, Markanek, and Barajas are all going to come off here. He's going to be Reedy, Booth, and Traeger that come on and try and help see out the result for the Charleston Battery here. Number 21, Tristan Traeger. And number two, Pierre Reedy. Traeger's had a solid campaign for Charleston. Booth saved Charleston a point in Miami last time out. And Pierre Reedy is more really of a defensive change for Charleston. Speaking of defensive changes, Pat Hogan has just trotted on for Pittsburgh. Another former Charleston Battery player. He has come on to try and help the Riverhounds effort also a substitute down the stretch. The reason Riverhounds for that, of course, is Michael DeShields' injury. We hope that DeShields and Avila are okay. They both leave us. Other changes were around that as well, but those were the two mandatory changes due to injury. Pittsburgh to win a free Reedy. kick and Reedy was actually yellow carded for that challenge. The Sphinx Reedy. yellow. So his first contribution is having his name taken by Matthew Corrigan. 13 minutes of the 90 left. And Pittsburgh goal here. Could set us up for a heck of a finish in South Carolina. Danny Griffin stands over it. Griffin throws in a dangerous ball, but again, it is too close to Trey Muse. And each and every set piece here for the Riverhounds needs to be quality. When things aren't clicking through the run of play in the attacking phase of the game, set pieces are a brilliant way to claw yourself back. And that's a missed opportunity for Bob Lilly as Sandy Griffin just overhits it. Offside flag is up against Augie Williams. Pittsburgh restarts the play. A lot of 
Ellis floated over the top. It's a nice cushioned header for Griffin. Cut out by Crawford. And initially kept alive by Harmon, but a foul is called. And it is a battery free kick. I think Reedy gets away with one here. Seems like Harmon comes across and it's a clean challenge on the ball. We'll take a look at it here. I don't know. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> I like that. That was good. Clever. I'm kind of with you, Ricky. That one could have gone either way. I think it's going to be a massive emphasis if you're at the Charleston Battery just to win second balls as well. 12 plus minutes left for the Riverhound, so they're going to elect to play route one into Nabratiqua and Kiza, two big aerial presence. So what does the supporting cast look like? If you're Allen and Crawford, the ball gets by you. Your job is not done. You have to have the ability to turn around and double down. Because second, second phase actions are going to be so important for the Riverhounds to try to fight themselves back into this game and get any sort of things going in the attacking half of the field. Nice turn by Kizza in traffic. And he's the one that's penalized in the end. Charleston get a free kick. And it looked like initially, correct me if I'm wrong, Ricky, that I thought Kizza was brought down, but maybe there was some follow through there that we missed. And it goes Charleston's way. Reason why we're not referees, Sean. It's a good point. <laughs> it's a good point. I said during halftime that Miami would do well to go to San Antonio and get a result. They're eight minutes in. Miami leads 1-0. Wow. The home of the champions. How about that? What we've seen it's not how you start, it's how you finish, especially for this battery side. Andrew Booth's on the pitch. <laughs> Still early doors in Texas, to be fair, but it could be a big moment. We'll see if Miami can see that out. Obregon Jr. trying to get on the end of that for Pittsburgh, who have about 10 minutes plus, you would think, a big chunk of injury time left. Try and score twice and keep their unbeaten run alive in the USL Championship. Second longest unbeaten run in Pittsburgh franchise history. It is in serious jeopardy right now. Back. Muse clears. Pittsburgh gets possession. Etsu. Nice little threaded ball. It's then curled into the penalty area, looking for Dequa. Griffin helps to reset it. Langston Blackstock. This is Edward Kizza. And Kizza nearly found Dequa, who couldn't quite control it. Blackstock again. Loses out in the end to Dotson with a poor touch. Gets it back. Blackstock just to win a throw in for the Hounds here. Dequa cushioning it for Kizza. Kizza. Did he win a corner there? Was there a touch? Ooh, referee says no. It's been brought back. It's a goal kick. Edward Kizza can't believe it. Does go the way of Charleston here. Very difficult angle to see. My initial reaction thought an Archer got a last touch on it. Once again, we're not a referee. That's why we're up here, Sean. Pittsburgh come again. And through for Harmon. Was he brought down in the penalty area? Referee waves it away. And the battery clear. Hogan looks to reset. It's kept a lot. No, it was not kept alive on that far side. Flag is up. Looked like for a moment Ibarra kept it in, but he did not. And we'll look back at the challenge on. DZ Harmon. This ball rotates to the outside. It would have been very harsh to point to the spot there. Credit to Pomelik comes across. It's a whole lot of the ball. Good no call. 
a great ball. Booth in behind. Can the battery put this beyond a reasonable doubt? It's a good run into the penalty area. Was there a drag back there? Booth continues, and then it's a poor touch at the tail end of the sequence. And it trickles out of play. Golden opportunity. And Traeger wasn't able to take advantage of it. That could have been game, set, and match. Bergon Jr. wins a free kick in the meantime for Pittsburgh. They know how good the battery can be in transition. They nearly polished it off there. Kizza for Etu. Can Pittsburgh get one more back? Is it going to be the batteries night here in South Carolina? If this holds. Charleston would not only move up to second, they'll be four games unbeaten. Get on a nice run themselves going into the month of August. Clumsy challenge from Kizza. Only help Charleston use some clock. Charleston were 3 0 up after 56 minutes. DZ Harmon gave Pittsburgh a glimmer of hope in the 71st. Charleston has been able to see a good chunk of the game out since then, and now they're going to make another change. AJ Cochran is going to come on. And that is it for Augie Williams. That's his ninth goal on the year. Augie Williams, he was fantastic just in terms of his movement. Asking all sorts of questions, creating all sorts of nightmares. This back line of the River Hounds, offside or not, takes his goal extremely well. If you're Ben Pierman, you have to be very pleased with the shift that your number nine just put in. Was involved, of course, in the goal Avila scored as well. And his shot parried by Wade, but Avila did the rest. It's really been that front three, Avila, Barajas, and Augie Williams really put on a show tonight for Ben Pierman's boys and led the way. Traeger tiptoes on the touch line. Crawford in tight quarters is able to get his way out of trouble and keep possession. And he loses out and it's a goal kick. A little early maybe to go to the <laughs> corner flag. With all due respect to Robbie Crawford. I was about to say it. <laughs> Crawford, Traeger and Reedy there, all trying to play keep away in a five yard box. Not the highest success rate. Well, you can see the frustration there from Bob Lilly. Hasn't had too many games like this this season where at times his team has been outplayed. There might still be just about enough time to get this back, but a borderline miracle would be needed if the Riverhounds are going to salvage a point here. Three minutes of the 90 left. Harmon runs onto this ball on the far side. First time cross is behind Obergon Jr. Kizza gets on the end of it. Hogan in support. Ordonez for Etu. Etu's ball in takes a deflection and then it is cleared out of play. And it is a throw in going Pittsburgh's way on the near side. Dequa. Pittsburgh settles for another throw. Dequa again. Curling a decent ball in. And it was Kizza's header that sees it go out of play for a goal kick. 
It is a good ball in from Albert Dequil, but you want him on the receiving end of it. 10 goals on the year. He makes his money in around that 18 yard box. He just hasn't had the service that you come to expect. Our ball Bowie and Albert Dequil have been very quiet, especially once you get in around that 18 yard box. Bob Lilly talked about the road to full fitness for Albert Dequa, and he's in behind here for Pittsburgh. It's Dequa, and he's stopped by Muse. Dequa thought he may have been held on the way through there. Play continues. I also wonder if Dequa had gone down in the penalty area. If the referee would have pointed to the spot, we'll never know. That was a huge chance for the Riverhounds. That ball floated in for Kizza. He's a touch too firm. And that takes us into the 90th minute. Question is, if he's getting hold, you go down and you win a red card and a point to the spot, but take nothing away from Trey Muse. Comes off his line extremely quick, makes himself massive, and cuts down any sort of angle for Albert Dequay. It likes to go up and over. Massive save from that young man. He's had about four of them tonight, hasn't he, Trey Muse? He has really been tested, despite at times the battery being much the better side. Four saves in particular have kept Charleston in charge in South Carolina to this point. We are being told there's gonna be a big chunk of injury time. And the seven minutes goes up here in the low country. That is confirmed. Seven more minutes to go. Again, maybe just about enough time for Pittsburgh, but they need a heck of a finish here. And you SC Health Sports Medicine providing the stoppage time at the end. And Pittsburgh doing a set piece on the near side that's taken quickly. Ibarra. You not wide for Blackstock. Ibarra again. Etu. Too far in front. Now one thing we could also mention down the stretch here, Ricky, is We've had a couple of chances throughout the season to talk about this storyline involving Charleston, but now is as good a time as, as ever to remind everyone, this is Ben Pierman's first season. Came over from Memphis where he had a tremendous year a season ago. And the transformation that the Battery have undergone is once again highlighted tonight in a big game on a big stage against a team that is 13 matches unbeaten at the top of the East and the Battery for a large portion of this game have been the better side. I don't think people understand how difficult it is to come into a new environment, to bring in new players and have them buy in into your culture, to change everything from top to bottom. And that just speaks volumes of just the man that Ben Pierman is, number one, but also the tactical mind that he has, the way that he wants to play, the, the way that he has the ability to step into that locker room and gain respect from every single one of those players and have them fight and deep, dig deep down into each other just to be like, look, we're in this together. I want to fight for my head coach. I want to fight for that man next to me. And that's something that is just so impressive to see. Griffin is in for Pittsburgh. It's across the face of goal and not quite kept alive. Blackstock tries to regain possession. To his Etu, and then Charleston does come out with it at the tail end. Another huge chance goes by the wayside for the Hounds. They do everything right, just lacking that final execution, that killer instinct inside that 18 yard box. That man can have a sigh of relief. Does just enough to deny. And add to the target on this near side. It goes out of play. Four minutes left for Pittsburgh, but they need to score twice. 
Oh, you got the next well, Bob Lilly's boys have never quit in this game. They were 3-0 down. Had enough chances to come from behind, but besides DC Harmon's clinical finish, no one else has been able to find the finishing touch. Nice little run here on the near side by Reedy. Battery could finish this off into the middle for Traeger. And Traeger shanks his shot. Pittsburgh continuing to push. Can they get another one? And again, Charleston win possession back. Time now, the biggest enemy for the Riverhounds. And Kizza, the ball over the top. Still Edward Kizza. Invites Blackstock into the attack. And it's Blackstock who took aim. It's right down the middle for Trey Muse. At the end of it, you see Albert Dequa's hands in the air saying you have to. It is a spectacular strike from that distance to beat Trey Muse. He hits it well, to be fair, but straight at the goalkeeper. I was successful. If you just lump the ball into the dangerous area and tell your big man to go up and get it, who's been starving for service. One last touch from Augie Williams, keeping the ball on the near touch line. Now a spectator. It's a result that is going to see Charleston climb back up to second place in the table. Just two points behind Pittsburgh. And with Tampa Bay, I believe that was final. They drew earlier on tonight against Indy. And leaves it open for the battery to maybe be the top contenders to push Pittsburgh off their top spot in the weeks to come. We will see. Dequa in the final moments here. Gives it back to Crawford. Obregon, lovely skill. DZ Harmon has been very strong in his return to Charleston tonight. That's Pittsburgh's lone strike. Stock pinging one into the penalty area, but too far in the end for Kizza and then Griffin. And that may very well be that. It doesn't get easier for either side in the weeks and months ahead, but this is going to go down as a memorable night in the Low Country. The Charleston Battery, the day that they ended the streak their rivals from Pittsburgh. And maybe it's going to be all orange moving forward for Charleston. Who knows? Maybe these are the lucky kids for them. <laughs> we will see. And Pierman has talked about being a little suspicious. Or I should say, uh, not suspicious, uh, superstitious is the word I was looking for. To be fair, you ask Van Pierman about his fashion. Look yep. no further than his shoes. Clean Air Force Ones at the moment. <laughs> Clean kids on the field. Oh, a plus all around for the battery in terms of their fashion and execution. Charleston wins it by three goals to one. They end the 13 game unbeaten run for Pittsburgh. And they are right on the heels of the Riverhounds in the Eastern Conference table with a statement win over Pittsburgh tonight. We'll see how Bob Lilly's boys respond. It's a rare defeat for them. Their first defeat since April. But for Charleston, it's a memorable night in the Low Country. And they do beat their rivals here by three goals to one. Well, man of the match, look no further than the opening goal scorer, Juan Sebastian Palma.
Brilliant header, and it got Charleston off to the right start inside of 12 minutes. Fantastic header from the center back. Just rises up, beats his individual mark, and it's off to the corner to celebrate. So good on the attacking phase, but also defensively. So stout, so compact, keeping everything in front of him. And he's been so good at stepping to that middle third and breaking lines with his passing. So well-deserved man of the match there for Palma. Heineken man of the match there for Charleston and a well-earned victory for the battery here against their rivals from the Steel City. Really fun night, really great occasion. Two of the best clashing in the USL Championships Eastern Conference. And in the end, the battery come out on top in this long-standing USL Championship rivalry. The Wicked Weed Brewing final score says it all. The battery three, the Riverhounds one. We will wrap it all up next. Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. Charleston is located in the low country of South Carolina. The history here, it runs deep and you can't imagine being any place else. This place is magical. Sean St. Jacques, Ricky Lopez Espin back here with you, wrapping things up from the Low Country. It is a statement win for the Charleston Battery over the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, ending the 13 game unbeaten run for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds here. Great win, and we get a chance to recap the 90 minutes here at the end of this one. Full time highlights are brought to you by Bud Light. And Ricky, we begin with the opening goal inside of 11 minutes. Just now good enough in the back line for the Riverhounds. Palma just gets himself right on top of that six yard box, unmarked. You see everyone who runs near post gets caught ball watching the center back. What a fantastic center uh, header, excuse me, that is to start the scoring for the home side. 45th minute, and we saw maybe a little bit of controversy here, but it was the second goal in the end for the battery. Clear and cut offside, but Augie Williams sees, as I hear the confusion, don't matter. Great first touch out of his body as Jamali Waits coming up. Fantastic finish for the striker to get his ninth on the year right before halftime. That made it 2-0, 56th minute. Augie's in the middle of it again, but it's Avila who finishes. But defending 101 or lack thereof for the Riverhounds, as Joey Farrell steps off his line, he needs to be very sure that he's going to win that ball. But as he does, the lack of rotation between Ordonez and the Shields, but give credit to Avila. Gets a rebound, the composure to find the back of the net, and 3-0 at the moment in time for the Riverhounds. But this is textbook for Bob Lee's side. As this ball gets sprayed wide, information on this ball from Black Sox, there's information, and DZ Harmon makes no mistake about that finish. That's how the game ended. Charleston beat Pittsburgh by three goals to one. Full-time match stat shows you how tight it really was, and if Pittsburgh had taken a few more chances, a different narrative would have unfolded. Yeah, it was all gonna be about who's gonna be more clinical in critical moments in the attacking 18-yard box and defensively, and Ben Pierman got his game plan spot on. You talked about the first 10 minutes, how do you weather that storm, but you get an opening goal and then you have the ability to settle down and play your game. Be compact, keep everything in front of you. Defensively was the key for the Charleston Battery and what a massive three points that is as they come along in the 2023 season. Well, it was arguably the marquee matchup of this week in the USL Championship and it lived up to the billing. Great performance from the Charleston Battery pretty much from start to finish. Bob Lilly's boys were put under the pressure and despite a late riposte, 
they fall here in the Low Country. For Ricky Lopez, Esprit, and our entire crew, I'm Sean St. Jacques. We say so long from South Carolina. The Battery with a statement win, and the Riverhounds' unbeaten run ends in the Low Country. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.